Okay, we would like to welcome everyone to another edition of our Orthodox Bible Study Program. And uh, we will begin, as is our custom, uh, through prayer. And we uh, like you to join us as we pray for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Master, who loves mankind, illumine our hearts with the pure light of your divine knowledge, and open the eyes of our mind to understand the teachings of your gospel. Instill in us also the fear of your blessed commandments, that we may overcome all carnal desires, entering upon a spiritual life, and understanding and acting in all things according to your holy will. For you are the enlightenment of our souls and bodies, O Christ God, and to you we give glory, together with your eternal Father, your all-holy, gracious, and light-creating Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Glory be to Jesus Christ. We continue in the Old Testament book of Exodus, which is the first book of not only the Old Testament, but the Bible. Those of you who are following by way of the Orthodox uh, Study Bible, we're on page 8. And when we left off on our last class, we were in the third chapter, and we ended with the, the curse that was uh, given by God, or the punishment that was given by God to the serpent uh, in verse 15, uh, which is also, uh, as we called it, the uh, first uh, gospel, or the pre-gospel, um, which was the first promise in Scripture uh, that uh, there would come a time uh, when God would uh, redeem uh, his creation. And uh, it was not the will of God that uh, man uh, should suffer uh, in this way. So that we see, uh, even in the beginning, and, and as we talked about before, uh, even with man, uh, even with God going out uh, into uh, the uh, garden, uh, which was the normal time for, for he and Adam uh, to be able to converse, to be able to be together uh, in a holy, intimate way. And, um, uh, of course, after the sin, uh, Adam and Eve hide themselves. And, but still, uh, God goes out after them. And remember, we talked about the imagery of the prodigal son. Uh, the father not only went after uh, the younger son, who was the prodigal, uh, but even, uh, if you remember from Luke's Gospel, uh, even the older son, uh, when he heard the music and was very uh, and found out what was happening, that this prodigal son came back and the father killed the fatted calf, well, he was angry and he refused to go in. And what happens? The father goes out to him. So therefore, uh, the, God goes even to uh, Adam and Eve. And, and even when, when he is asking uh, uh, where they are uh, in the original language, uh, we we understand it as a, an endearment, like like uh, a father with little children. Uh, where are you? Uh, in fact, um, in in some of the research that I did, uh, I found one scholar who who talked about uh, this. Uh, where are you? Uh, understanding it from uh, an, an ancient perspective, uh, he uh, very beautifully uh, talked about um, the uh, not only the, the, the tenderness, but uh, it was like, well, what are you guys up to? You know, uh, or what's going on? What have you been doing today? You know, uh, a kind of like, like eagerly wanting to hear from you. You know, it, it reminds me, uh, of when I was a little kid, you know, whenever I came home from school, uh, came in the back door and, you know, would take off my coat and put down my books and my mother would have some kind of a treat and she would have her cup of tea and, and it, she would want me to tell her everything that happened during the day. And there was a, there was a joy about that. And, and, you know, I would tell her everything that happened and uh, she would sit there and we would talk and then uh, it was time to eat. Uh, when dad came home and then, you know, of course, uh, the traditional cycle of, of homework and then maybe a little bit of television if there was time and then going back again, getting ready for the next day. So, you know, like, how are you doing? Uh, you know, what have you done during the day? This, this sharing, 
this compassionate, kind sharing. So that you see, um, uh, you know, a lot of times uh, people uh, get a misunderstanding of the Old Testament, thinking that the God of the Old Testament was some kind of a different God than the God of the New Testament. It's not true. Um, God is eternally the same. Uh, God doesn't evolve. He doesn't change. He is eternal. Uh, and uh, he is uh, filled with love. Uh, like the fathers of the church, especially the Cappadocians, talk about uh, God creating because of love. Uh, and, and creating out of love. And, and, and even uh, the, the terminology of, well, everything that was created, he, he saw it and said it was good. Uh, there was a certain uh, pride, if you will, uh, and, and joy uh, in, 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 in the goodness of what was created and, and a sharing in it. There's an intimacy. And this is throughout uh, the Old Testament scripture. And I hope that I'll be able to point that to you. Even in the most darkest hours, um, still the, 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 the compassionate, merciful God is there uh, despite the sinfulness of mankind, uh, working with them uh, in order to bring about the salvation. And this uh, 315 is a future promise of, uh, as we uh, will understand it in Orthodoxy, as the, the future incarnation, uh, uh, in which God would take on uh, flesh and uh, would dwell among us, uh, teach us the, the, the truth, and, and, and uh, recreate, if you will, or restore and recreate his creation in the original, bringing it back to what it was an originally intended to be. That was the work of Christ. That's what we call salvation. And uh, we see the beginnings of this. Uh, as we go uh, further uh, in uh, chapter 3, verse 16, now uh, he, uh, after uh, the culprit is, is dealt with, uh, now he uh, is going to address uh, the woman who was the first to partake of the, uh, of the fruit. And it says, and we're, we're quoting here, uh, the woman said, uh, he said to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your pain and your groaning, and in pain you shall bring forth children. Your recourse will be to your husband, and he shall rule over you. So now we see another effect of uh, the, the fall uh, of, of mankind. Uh, before, in the garden, Adam and Eve were equal. Uh, they were bone of bone, flesh of flesh. Remember we talked about that the last class. And, uh, and there was inequality, and, and there was an equality of love and joy and companionship uh, in this, this state of marriage. We talked about that also. Well, now that has been distorted. So that now what is happening is that there is a superiority that is being given. Uh, that uh, you uh, will uh, not only uh, have to uh, suffer uh, this uh, pain, uh, in, in childbearing, uh, which was uh, intended to be joyful and, and pleasant without any kind of, of, of uh, agitation or any type of uh, pain and discomfort. And uh, as, a record, as a result, uh, you will be subjected to your husband. And uh, he will rule over you uh, as uh, he is ruling over the rest of the creation. Now, uh, you are no longer equal partners but uh, he will rule over you. Now he turns to uh, Adam, the first man. Then to Adam, he, that is God, said, because you heeded the voice of your wife and ate from the one tree of which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat from it. Cursed is the ground in your labors. In toil you shall eat from it, all the days of your life. So, uh, therefore, no longer will it be a gentle toiling, uh, if you will, uh, as it was uh, originally, uh, where uh, he was tending uh, and, and cultivating and watching, and uh, like a mother uh, watching the children, you see. Uh, no longer will uh, the, 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 the ground give forth 
uh, it's, it's, it's a rich harvest of, of the wheat and, and, and the plants and so forth that man used to consume. Uh, but now uh, he will have to uh, be able to, to labor so that uh, now uh, from the sweat of one's brow uh, you will eat the labors of your hand, to put it uh, uh, another translation, to put it another way. So that there would now have to be exertion, there would have to be turmoil, uh, there would be toil, and every single thing that goes uh, along with it. Um, uh, every uh, farmer, uh, probably at this time of the year, we're going to be seeing, we're going to see them going out, getting the tractors and tilling the ground and so forth. Uh, of course, this is not the way it was done with Adam. Uh, but um, uh, at uh, this uh, particular time of year, we, we, we are even more in tune because we enter into the spring season, a time to turn the soil and to plant. Uh, but now, uh, no longer uh, will you just have this, the purity of the crop, but now there's going to be inter intermingled weeds and, and thistle. So, uh, uh, and, and if you uh, ever know, we used to call them as a kid, uh, we lived uh, on kind of like the end of town and uh, right after our road there was a huge ditch and a hill and so forth. That In fact, the hill used to be, uh, many, many years ago, it used to be uh, one of many small little um, uh, 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 coal, uh, coal mines. And uh, whenever we would go uh, into the woods and, and play and so forth, you would have these stickers that would stick to your clothes, you know, these little balls. And you'd have to pull them out. And I remember my dog, uh, he had long hair. He would get them in his hair and start to cry and pull them out. And we'd have to uh, sometimes get scissors to be able to cut these things out. So in amongst uh, this, we, we have these, these thistles, these, these uh, 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 thorns and so forth that are now going to be a, pro a part of it in order, to, uh, uh, in order to make it even more difficult. So that if you do not toil, uh, you don't, uh, you're, you're not going to eat. You're not going to receive the benefits. And it's going to be hard work. And along with hard work is, is worry and anxiety. You know, uh, is the weather going to be right? Uh, just like the farmers today, you know, uh, are we going to be able to uh, have enough rain, enough sunshine? All of these different things are not going to be the uh, are the worry that started with, uh, with uh, the first man, Adam. So both thorns and thistles it shall come uh, to bring forth for you, and ye shall eat the herb of the field, and in the sweat of your face you shall eat the bread, till you turn to the ground from which you were taken. Earth you are, remember, uh, how was Adam, how did he begin? He took the clay or the earth and formed it into uh, his body. Uh, earth you are. That's all that you are. If it were not for the breath of God, you would be nothing. And that includes all of us. And, 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 it, and it is a good sobriety that the church calls us to in the Lenten season, especially as we worship during the, uh, the um, uh, pre-sanctified liturgies. Uh, we're going to hear these type of, uh, this terminology and, and this imagery over and over again. Uh, the, the, the need to, to uh, till the earth and, and earth we are, uh, we are nothing and we're going to return to that same earth. Uh, as God said, the day that you eat of, of, of the fruit of this tree, you shall die. And as a result, now death has entered into the world and uh, with death, corruption uh, and, and, and sickness and, and, and all of these different things. So that as uh, Adam falls uh, in uh, his inability to, to be able to come close to God uh, and in the alienation that results from sin, and as he is uh, more and more alienated from God uh, and, and, and suffers uh, all of these different uh, outcomes of what he was told would happen, uh, what happens is that all of creation now falls. Uh, because uh, Adam is a unique link. What happens to him happens to creation and vice versa, you see. Uh, so therefore, now uh, all of creation uh, is uh, going to fall. So that um, 
Now we are going to have uh, uh, storms and, and inclement weather uh, and, and droughts. Uh, and uh, it also means the, the, the turbulence of the sea uh, and, and, and flooding and, and all of these different things uh, uh, that are a result uh, of, of nature. Lightning, thunder, all of these things are, are, are now entering into uh, this picture. Uh, that happens as a result of the fall of mankind. So, uh, therefore, uh, uh, Adam uh, is reminded that he is uh, dust, uh, he is earth, and to earth, uh, and to that same earth you uh, shall return. Uh, your body shall turn back into ashes. Uh, you will uh, in inherit now uh, corruption and uh, death, uh, death itself. Um, and uh, this now becomes a, a reality. So Adam called his wife uh, name Life because she was the mother of all living, this, uh, this uh, mother of life, Zoe. Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made garments of skin and clothed them. As I told you before, there are many of the fathers of the church that believe that the original creation, uh, that there was a luminous contact, uh, con uh, con uh, uh, a luminous content uh, to Adam and Eve. And the skin uh, of which uh, they are speaking, uh, the sacred author is speaking about, is the actual skin that we have on uh, our body to uh, be able to... Uh, to uh, clothe us, uh, to be able, to, so that we're able to see that even in this fallen state, uh, the good father, that, that God cares for his children. He, he, he makes garments of skin uh, in order to protect them now from the elements because now you're going to have extreme hot and extreme cold, you see, because the world has fallen, uh, the cosmos has fallen. Uh, so, uh, therefore, we see in this, uh, this uh, making of uh, these, uh, the garment uh, of skin uh, another way of God uh, caring for uh, Adam and also uh, for Eve, a, 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 a sign of, of tenderness and concern. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. Uh, we, we see this as a kind of a mockery. Uh, like, uh, so now you, you think you know everything, uh, you see. Uh, now you're going to find just how much uh, you, you uh, don't know. So uh, he uses this, this uh, type of terminology. Behold, man has become like one of us to know good and evil. Now, lest he put out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of pleasure to cultivate the ground from which he was taken. So he cast out Adam and made him dwell opposite the garden of pleasure. He then stationed the cherubim and the fiery sword which turns every way to guard the way to the tree of life. Okay. Um, in fact, uh, in the Vesper service that we had just completed here at St. Nicholas, uh, we heard in the Stikiri. Uh, the reference made to this, right? That now, uh, because tomorrow is the veneration of the Holy Cross, in preparation of that, uh, now uh, the Holy Mother Church tells us that uh, now, because of the cross, and because of what was done on the cross, now the flame is extinguished, okay? Uh, even through the blood of Christ. Uh, and, and now, uh, instead of having the cherub with the fiery sword, uh, the sword goes out, if you will, and now the, the cherub disappears. And instead of preventing uh, uh, Adam and Eve uh, to return into the garden, uh, and that's what we mean by the turning of each direction, uh, now, uh, because of the cross and all the effect of the cross and the grace of the cross, in fact, uh, even... Uh, in, uh, if you listen closely to the terms that, that are used in defining the cross, uh, the cross now takes on like a living entity, doesn't it? It's not just some kind of a, 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 a barren object, 
but now becomes a life-giving force. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to say that, you know, it, it's a living being, but uh, because of the grace uh, 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 and the death and passion of Christ and his death upon it, now uh, it is a means by which grace is dispensed so that the church uh, speaks of the cross as, a, as an entity now. So we see the magnificence of the cross, and that's why we fall down and adore it. So that man would not be able to further destroy uh, what God has prepared, uh, his ability to be able to, uh, uh, to partake of the tree, uh, then he casts him out of the garden and now uh, sets the cherubim with the flaming sword so that no one can enter. Uh, and uh, what happens is, uh, as we read in the Hymns of Paradise uh, by uh, Ephraim the Syrian, uh, now uh, that tree uh, disappears into the ground and it reemerges as the cross on Golgotha, you see. And instead of being this uh, fluffy, uh, big, robust, uh, leaf-filled uh, fruitful tree, uh, we, we see uh, the ugliness of the tree of the cross. And uh, so that uh, uh, the, the, the will of God and the means uh, for salvation will not be corrupted, now uh, man is cast outside uh, of that particular garden. So with this, we, we have uh, an ending of what we call the narratives of um, uh, creation. And uh, one more thing that I had wanted to discuss with you is the difference uh, in our understanding of the fall in regards to uh, the Western Church and, uh, and, and, and what we believe as, as Orthodox Christians. Uh, the main differentiation of theology is such that in the Western Church with, with uh, uh, the uh, later writing of some Western fathers, uh, what happens is their concept of the fall uh, changes. Uh, in the Western church, when Adam fell, he fell completely uh, into a depravity, like, like, like an animalistic uh, type of existence, that there uh, was a completeness of the fall, that that there was no grace uh, and, and uh, there was a totality. Uh, this is not what we believe in the, in, in the Eastern Orthodox Church. The fathers of the church have, have maintained that, uh, that even amongst the fall, uh, uh, Adam and Eve still retained some of the image of God. All right? It was tarnished. Uh, it was darkened. Uh, their uh, reasoning was now uh, uh, clouded. Uh, they cannot, you know, we, we uh, who are inheritors of, of that first sin, uh, we cannot reason properly. Uh, uh, we become irrational at times. We, we are ruled by our passions of, of anger and, and lust and, and, and uh, gluttony and and all of these other different things. And as a result, um, uh, there is like a fog or there's a darkness about us. We cannot see, we cannot perceive. That's why we say many times uh, over and over again that if it were not for the grace of God, if it were not for God coming uh, after us, we would not be able to be saved on our own. No matter how well we're educated, uh, no matter how good we try to be or what kind of laws we pass and and, and uh, you know, penitential uh, 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 practices that are used uh, uh, in disciplining others and so forth, correcting others, we still cannot be saved if it were not for the grace of God. Uh, however, uh, in the Eastern Church, we still retain some of that image uh, of God. And uh, that spark is still alive. Although, you know, nothing as it was, but still, there, there is something that is still good and something still that is worthwhile. Uh, God does not create us to see us completely destroyed, okay? 
Uh, another uh, differentiation here is that uh, in the Western Church with, with um, uh, Anselm of uh, Canterbury and, and uh, Aquinas and, and, and others, um, Augustine and, and so forth, uh, now um, in, in, the, in the inheritance of sin, in the Western concept because of the totality of the fall, we also inherit original sin, the original sin and the guilt and everything that comes from that original sin from Adam and Eve. And uh, it is a, a, a teaching of the Western Church that that, that effect of the fall is, is promoted and propagated uh, through uh, licentiousness and, and, and through concupiscence. Uh, through uh, uh, the, the beginning of, in, in sexuality, we kind of uh, inherit uh, that fallenness, the same fallenness that were a part of Adam and Eve. Uh, in the uh, Eastern Church, uh, we do not believe that concept. We believe that uh, because Adam and Eve have sinned, they started the process of sin. And the world is contaminated with sin and imperfection. And we are born uh, into that sinful world. Uh, and, and we, therefore, do not inherit the original sin that can only be cleansed through baptism, you see. Uh, in fact, uh, in the Western Church, uh, there was even the belief that uh, those who were not uh, properly baptized and, and died prior to that uh, were committed to an outer area to uh, what is uh, where we get the word limbo, uh, to a kind of out there uh, existence that is not a part of, of, of uh, the, the saved uh, creation. Uh, and um, uh, this belief in, in a, a purgatory and the needing to be cleansed of sin through merits of Christ or merits of the saints, which is rejected in orthodoxy. But uh, when we inherit, we do not inherit uh, the original sin of Adam and Eve, but we inherit the consequences. Uh, we are, and the way I like to put it is, uh, we are kind of contaminated uh, and, and a lot of times um, in my pastoral ministry, uh, when dealing with people who are sick and, and, and especially terminally ill, you know, I always uh, use this terminology, God creates perfectly with imperfect matter, you see. And that's why, you know, we still have sickness and, and all of these things and we still struggle with that. Yes. There are times when we are healed, uh, but yet we are healed to become sick again, okay? Uh, because, uh, you know, earth we are, and to earth we shall return. And, and uh, even the funeral rites, uh, this is one of the things that are, that, that are said. And uh, we take uh, the uh, 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 dirt or, or the sand and uh, place it on the casket or the deceased, uh, anointing them with uh, the, the holy oil as we read the prayer of absolution. And when we do this, uh, earth you are, and earth you shall return. Okay? Uh, so, uh, therefore, um, uh, we, we have a, a kind of different understanding of the fall uh, of, of, of uh, mankind than the Western Church. Um, and uh, granted that uh, baptism... Uh, is the means by which we are cleansed, we are cleansed of all sinfulness. And when uh, we, are, uh, uh, we partake of sin, we partake of sin by our own conscience, uh, by our own will, you see, not because Adam and Eve have sinned or someone before us. But it is, it is a result of our own rebellion against God to which we are held accountable, to which uh, we are uh, cleansed in the sacrament of baptism. And in the Orthodox Church, uh, the, the second baptism 
we refer to as the baptism of tears or repentance or another way is uh, the sacrament of confession. So that with tears now, uh, we, we weep and these tears now uh, are a sign of our repentance and our return uh, to, uh, to God and uh, to the life to which he uh, has intended us to be. So uh, therefore we come uh, to the end and now what will begin are uh, the narratives concerning the lineage uh, of, of Adam and Eve, uh, their children and, and uh, the consequence uh, of uh, the first sins committed by Adam and Eve so that we see how sin begins here and it now is perpetuated and becomes worse and worse and worse. Uh, another way uh, of, of seeing this, um, we see a lot of the patriarchs and, and, and a lot of the people of, of uh, this uh, uh, Old Testament era who are living for long periods of time. And then um, we will see that that time span uh, will decrease and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, so that uh, man, uh, you know, uh, in, in, in his sinfulness, uh, so that there is no more opportune time to sin more, uh, these, these years are lessened. And we'll talk a little bit about that uh, a little later on. So therefore, uh, come with me and, and let's go into the fourth chapter. Uh, in our Bible is subtitled, uh, Cain Kills Abel. Or I remember as a kid, my mother teach me, uh, Cain slew Abel. That's how I remember who killed who. Uh, now in chapter 4, verse 1. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife. Okay, we, we see the reference to wife. And now we see, uh, as a result of fallenness, uh, the need for uh, reproduction uh, with uh, a, a sexuality and an expression of that sexuality. And we see here that that is done, it's still in the context of, of, of this marriage because she is referred to as wife. And uh, the uh, terminology to know uh, does not necessarily mean a, 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 a cerebral knowledge. Uh, okay, we know your name and who your parents are or where you might have been born and how you were raised and and other uh, historical incidents of your life, okay? Uh, to know means to know someone in an intimate way, uh, to, to have a complete knowledge of, and to have an intense intimacy with, okay? That's what it means uh, to know. So that, that Adam... Uh, was completely involved that in their marriage they were one and they were expressing their, uh, their sexuality. And she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man through God. Now this is the first time in which now there is no uniqueness of the creation like Adam and Eve where God takes the clay or the earth and forms it and breathes into the nostrils the breath of life, now what happens is that God becomes an actual agent uh, in uh, the, the begetting or the continuation of life, human life. And I, I also want, uh, and I think it'd be proper to, to also clarify here, that uh, this, uh, to put it in, in a more modern terminology, uh, we now enter into a relationship with God because of the highness of our calling of being co-creators, okay? And as a result, uh, uh, there is to be a, um, how would you say, there, there is to be uh, a propriety, there's a proper way of, of uh, reproducing uh, uh, other human beings within this context of which Adam and Eve conceive, it conceives Cain and gives birth to Cain. 
And he is uh, uh, now uh, one who is unique because now for the first time it is God who is the, the agent that enters in to bring this about. Uh, you know, uh, human beings when they are born, they are not uh, simply biological entities of a proportion of the male and a portion of the female that, that come together and fertilize and all these. It's not just that. And we have to also be able to, to see within this, this short phrase that life begins at that conception. Okay? Uh, Cain is already a being. Uh, she, gives, she gives birth to already existing life. You see what I mean? Okay? People here are shaking their head. I hope you are uh, back at home. Um, uh, it, uh, and if not, then if you write to me and want me to explain further, I will. So that now uh, we are co-creators with God. Uh, and uh, this is a very serious thing to be able to act within this capacity. We are not called upon to be like the animals that reproduce just according to their own desire. Okay? Uh, this is a part of the image of God that is in us, that uh, you know we, we are co-creating with God. Uh, we are taking part that now uh, Eve, by giving birth to Cain, uh, she actually becomes the agent of life. You see? Uh, that's why Adam uh, is able to refer to her as such. And she says, I have now acquired a man through God. Then she bore again, this time, his brother Abel. Okay? Now Abel was a shepherd of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Okay? Um, the, the difference being Abel uh, uh, being a... a uh, uh, I mean, uh, 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 Abel being one who... Uh, uh, took care of the flock, who represents this nomadic type of uh, life, uh, is now portrayed in the person of Abel. Uh, he is a shepherd. In fact, uh, if we are able to see in a lot of icons of the resurrection, in fact, here in our church, we have it, uh, uh, we have it depicted, uh, a large one depicted on one of our walls uh, of the church, and uh, in uh, the background, we see on one of the side of Christ, uh, someone holding a staff, a shepherd's staff. Uh, this is Cain, okay? Because he was a shepherd. And of course, later on in history, this imagery of, of shepherd is going to take on a whole different dimension. And we'll talk about that as, as we progress much, much further ahead. But Cain, on the other hand, was a tiller of the ground. Now, in the process of time, Cain brought a sacrifice to the Lord from the fruits of the ground. Okay? And Abel also brought a sacrifice from the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. Now, uh, uh, Cain, uh, being a tiller of the ground, brings a gift to, to God, uh, only that which he uh, uh, has produced. Okay, however, Abel brings a sacrifice also to God, and it's important to know that both Cain and Abel uh, are able to, to enter into a worshipful relationship with God. Okay, in fact, uh, I would dare say that, that I'm sure that Adam and Eve uh, probably spoke to them about what paradise was like. And, 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 and their experiences in paradise with God. So, uh, therefore, uh, they bring to him uh, a sacrifice, uh, a, 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 an offering uh, of something that was of theirs. Okay? And uh, Abel, uh, by bringing the firstborn of the flock, as well as the fat, uh, we, we see here a deeper image of, of this sacrifice in that, um, it is the firstborn, 
And uh, the firstborn is always the most special, okay? Uh, it is always the one that is the most cherished, you know? Um, and uh, the, the offering of, of the fat is also to be understood as uh, being uh, uh, the, the richness, uh, the, the offering of the fat or the burning of the fat was considered to be a, a rich offering, okay? Uh, something that was highly pleasing, uh, something that, that was very, very special, okay? Uh, it was the finest thing that he had, that he gave to God, while Cain just simply gave whatever he had, okay? Let's go on a little bit further. The Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his sacrifices. So Cain was extremely sorrowful, and his countenance fell. Now, we might be able to ask, well, what is happening here? Uh, what is happening is this. God finds the sacrifice of Abel to be acceptable because, as the fathers of the church teach us, that came from his heart. It required effort. It was the finest thing that he could give, you see? And, and is, it is offered to him with, with, with great joy and, and, and like a sense of thanksgiving. While Cain just simply grabs whatever he chooses, that you know, it's just like I, I remember uh, in my first parish, uh, it was in Freehold, New Jersey, and uh, when I would go by, I remember going by one time, uh, Freehold, uh, going up Route Nine. This is going back forty years, and I was going to Perth Amboy. And right before, uh, uh, I can't think of some of the cities, but before uh, Elizabeth and Linden, uh, there was a huge, huge cemetery on the right-hand side. And, and I was traveling with my parents. We were going to visit some friends of ours. Uh, and um, we went by this huge cemetery. And in the front of the cemetery, there, there was a huge, uh, like, big tents that were set up that people were selling flowers. It was, it was Mother's Day. So that as you were coming into the, uh, into the cemetery, you could stop your car, give a toot, and they would bring, you know, some flowers over and, and, and you would, uh, you know, pay him and take flowers to your mother's grave. And, and I was, I always thought that, I was always, I thought, it was hysterical because I'm thinking to myself, my God, if, if that's uh, the, as little as you could think about your mother to wait to the cemetery to buy flowers. I mean, how sad is that? You know, if it were me, I would say, keep your flowers. If that's all, you know, you think of me, it's an insult. Okay? So, in this same type of thing, here, uh, the sacrifice of Abel was thought out. Uh, it had to be properly prepared. Uh, it, 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 it was uh, laborious. It was the best that could be offered. While Cain, on the other hand, Took whatever he can, probably just pulled it right out of the ground, and here, this is yours. You know, it reminds me of that commercial on television where there's the boxer uh, who comes to the door, and you know, one time he uh, brings the flower, and it's just like pulled out of the garden. It has the roots, and you know, it's all dirty and everything like that. You know, he has no appreciation of the beauty of the flower and what he's done. So uh, it, it's the same type of thing here, where where the heart of Abel, uh, that is what makes it, uh, the, the sacrifice so accepting to God and not so accepting. And as a result, uh, the, uh, an important thing happens here. It says that Cain was extremely sorrowful and his countenance fell. Now, St. Paul in his letter to the Romans, he talks about godly sorrow. And in fact, I gave a sermon here not too many weeks ago about that. There's a difference between sorrow and godly sorrow. 
uh, plain human sorrow, a part of our fallenness, is we may regret something that we have done, but it doesn't bring us to, to, to change. It, 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 it does nothing but, but lead us into more and more discouragement. And, and, uh, and, and godly sorrow is when we, we take that sorrow that we experience from being rejected by God or, or from our sinfulness and, and work on it in, in, in our repentance to become better. Okay, uh, the the sorrow of which um, uh, Cain is exhibiting here is a self pity sorrow, and 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 sometimes like you know there are times when I am called to go to a, either a county or a state prison or a federal prison to visit someone. And, um, you know, a lot of times uh, I, will, I will ask the question, are, are you sorry because you got caught? Or are you sorry because you realize that you have to change, that you did something awful that needs to change, you need to repent of? You have to become different. See? Okay? You, you see what I mean? Okay? So uh, this uh, causes him... Uh, to be very sorrowful. Uh, thus, now listen what happens. God doesn't say, well, too bad, you little brat, get away from me, or whatever. No, God is still compassionate. Thus, God said, he's, he's talking to Cain, what have you done? I, I beg your pardon. Uh, why why, uh, why are, are you uh, sorrowful? Then God said to Cain, um, I'm sorry, I lost my place. So God said to Cain, Why are you extremely sorrowful? And why has your countenance fallen? You see, he, he's depressed. It leads to the, like a depression. And why has your countenance fallen? Did you not sin, even though your brother is rightly? But do not divide it rightly. Be still. His recourse shall be with you, and you shall rule over him. What is happening here is that that even though uh, uh, the, that he the, his uh, 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 his gift was not properly accepted in the same way as his brother Abel, still uh, he is encouraged to repent, to be able to change your attitude. Uh, to, to let this uh, go to repentance and, and, and go out and make another offering or, 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 or do something that, that uh, you can kind of redeem yourself, okay? And this will be acceptable. There's no reason for you to, to be, uh, you know, sad and remorseful and, and, and lose hope and so forth. Uh, let this bring a change in you, Okay? So, instead of doing this, the opposite happens. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and he killed him. Okay? Uh, it's uh, important to, to, to know that when Cain took him out into the field, all right, this is the field that he tilled, all right, and he kills him. We have to see how much sin has, has, has increased. He had to go hold his brother down and, and be over top of him and take a rock and bash in his head. You see? So that we can see what, uh, what, what unrepentance leads to and jealousy leads to. Anger that makes one so fierce that is so all-consuming that it causes him to kill his brother. Okay? It is a vicious act. Life is a gift that is given by God. Even in the reproduction of children, Life is given by God. You see? 
to this cell that has been uh, that has been reformed uh, that has been formed uh, by by uh, human anatomy. God gave it life, you see, and it is His possession. He is the one that rules over life and death, for that matter. So therefore, this is a malicious act against uh, God himself and his brother. His brother, who is just like him. The same tissues, the same blood flows through their veins. Okay? They are one and the same. And even if, if he would have listened to God and, and used, as Paul called it, this godly sorrow, uh, none of this would have happened. But because he turned in on himself, it leads to greater sin. And he kills his brother. Then God said to Cain, Where is your brother? And he replied, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? There's a bit of sarcasm. And arrogance. You see how this is even growing? This sinfulness? How dare he speak to God in this way? How do I know? He knows very well what he has done. He's cognizant of it. Am I my brother's people? Am I responsible for my brother? Let him take care of himself. You see? Again, we have, because of sin the lack of appreciation for community, you see. Now, we are all individuals. We're not family. Let him fare for himself. I'm not responsible. We are now, now Cain is completely self-centered at the expense of the death of his brother. You see? We, we dig that sinful trench even deeper, don't we? Okay? Thus God then says to him, What have you done? Okay? This is a note of sobriety. What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Blood is believed to be the source of life. That blood, through bashing in his head, seeps into the ground, so that now even the ground itself cries out to God. Okay? So now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. You see? It reminds me of the... Uh, uh, Shakespeare's Hamlet, out, out, damn spot. You know, no matter how we clean our hands, we can't get rid of the blood. He always sees it. Okay? And now you are cursed from the urge with his open his mouth to receive your, blood, your, your brother's blood from your hand. And when you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. You will be groaning and trembling on the earth. Okay? Uh, you see a further intensity of that alienation and its effect. Not only the sweat of one's brow, but now groaning and, and, and exerting uh, to the point of exhaustion. Then Cain said to the Lord, My guilt is too great to be forgiven. Surely you have driven me out this day from the face of the ground. I shall be hunted from your face. I'm sorry, I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be groaning and trembling upon the earth. Then it will happen, if anyone finds me, he will kill me. Okay? So that now the hideousness of what he has done is now a part of him and can be seen. Okay? Uh, the, the, the evil has infected all aspects of him, his sinfulness. So that now he fears that if anyone sees him, they will kill him because they will see how he has changed. 
Sin changes us from the inside out, drives us to violence, causes us to lose the beauty of the soul of which we possess. You see? Okay? So, then the Lord said to him, another act of compassion, not so. Whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. Thus the Lord set a sign on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. An act of mercy. An act of compassion. Okay? Then Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, opposite Eden. He is further cast away. Just like the prodigal son goes to a far country. Okay? He is now cast away even further. The uh, Cain used his guilt as an excuse to avoid his repentance. And as a result, lost and even more ability to be intimate with God. It's interesting to point to point out the name Nod means one who wanders away from God. You see? To that distant land, if you will, where we are further and further away from God. Okay, we are going to end here and when we come back we'll continue in chapter 4 and talk about Cain's family. If you have any questions please uh, send me an email. I'll be more than happy to do my best to answer it for you. If you have anything you'd like to share bring it to our attention because we can use it even in the context of class to make it more enriching even for other people as it does as it will you. And uh, thanks be to God, uh, hopefully we'll be able to come back again uh, next uh, Saturday. And uh, uh, hopefully you will come and join us for another edition of our Orthodox Bible study here at St. Nicholas uh, and be able to watch at home by way of our uh, diocesan website and uh, the internet. Now uh, let us close and let us uh, conclude by offering the hymn in honor of the Mother of God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You are truly deserving of glory, O birth giver of God, the ever-blessed and most pure Mother of our God, more honorable than the cherubim, and beyond compare more glorious than the seraphim, who as a virgin gave birth to God the Word, true birth giver of God, we magnify you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, glory be to Jesus Christ. <laughs>